love that you got your view is beautiful. Y this view is beautiful. This view is beautiful. This view is beautiful. Hi yeah. everybody, it's Michael Buckley. I'm here with my good friend Steve Zaragoza. How are you? I'm great, man. From Source Fed. Yeah. You see him, you love him. We have like a very special romantic, all these. Yeah. We're going to a theme park together. We're like, we're gonna be on a date, we're gonna be riding the Ferris Dude. wheel. Oh my god. It's always borderline romantic with us. I honestly think it is. What are the origins of our friendship? How did how do you think when we saw each other that, and it was always like that? We just kind of fell into each other like we had been friends forever, but we hadn't. We but. instantly connected. Yeah. I don't know why. We, yeah. There's like a kinship or some sort of where our hearts are in yeah. the right place or I don't I know hope, what it is. I think so. We always end up just having great conversations about life and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah but we've never been on camera together. So, I, okay, hold I think on. the internet might ship this. This is, I hope it. Because this Zara ship. Buck, is that, is Zara Buckley. Zara Buckley? <laughs> I think we have to have a better Michael couple name. Goza. Michael Goza. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I. <laughs> Stike. <laughs> Stikel? Stikel? Oh, I ship Stikel. <laughs> Michael and Steve. Listen. Stuck. This is a <laughs> That is the best. I love it. Hashtag Buck stuck. Buck and Steve stuck. Stuck together. I ship stuck. I like it. Um, but so, yeah, what were you about to say? Well, I, I was going to say, this boat has no leaks in it. This boat. <laughs> <laughs> that is the nature boat. of our friendship. And yeah. This boat has no leaks. There's in no it. leaks in this boat. Well, this channel, these videos, I've been talking about struggles and my own personal struggles and like how I'm overcoming them. So I kind of wanted to get my YouTube friends together and just kind of ask, you know, like what have been your biggest challenges or what have been your biggest struggles and how did you overcome them? Oh man, this Think is a, a this is a deep. deep I question. know, I know. I've got some good answers. I've got some okay answers. Really? But yeah. Some people are, and then some people when the camera goes off goes, oh, I kind of wish I talked about this. I want you want to do it again. They're like, no. Don't let. But don't I mean, if you said, that. but if you said, what are your biggest struggles? I'd say, well, my mother died when I was twenty. And this, or I got divorced, and it's like, and this is how I work through it. So I just think people like to hear stories of how you get over shit. I mean, you know what, man? I'll just go for it. I got divorced go. myself. I that's what I think that's part of the reason we connected. Yeah, too. that yeah. is. A, yeah, it, absolutely. That, and, but I didn't even know it. I know. And you didn't know it. I know. I honestly think it was playlist right yeah, now. It was yeah, a playlist that we yeah. connected at. So I mean, well, I mean, getting divorced is something that I mean, it's it's a death, it's a loss, it's a it's a lot. So just you know, did you ever talk about it on camera? I mean, I talked about it on Rhett and Link's yeah. podcast, and that's the only time I've ever talked about it. Yeah. I did a video where I took it down real quick, and it was just... It, One of those videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, But it was just... It wasn't even for, like... You know, I know a lot of people do that. They take it down for, like, dramatic effect. Yeah. Or, like, to try to get people to be like, oh, my God, what What, what do you say? Someone, yeah. Yeah, I need to know. But I, my thing was just because so many people were asking, like, where the fuck is Sarah? Where the fuck is Sarah? Mm -hmm. And, um, so, is it okay if I cuss? Or yeah, so please, person? fucking okay. yes, Great. fucking yes, yeah. Um, so, and I was just like, alright, this is, this is gonna drive me crazy, because people keep asking. Right. And it really was dramatically affecting me, because I don't, I didn't really want to talk about it, but eventually I was just like, alright, I put up this very short video, it was just like, these are for the people who are, like, the, the most close to my, my channel, and the close, the people that watch my stuff. Right. And it was just, because I knew they would see it right away, and everybody else could just hear it from people who had seen it. Right, oh, he said it, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that video didn't need to live on the internet No, forever. it didn't, no, right, no. Right. And it was basically just like, you know, I we separated, probably, and we're getting divorced, I'm doing okay, it sucks, but that's that. And that's all it was, it left up for like maybe a couple of days, then I took it down. And, it, it. and it's difficult in a marriage or in a relationship when it involves another person, because like, you know, you're not like a YouTube couple, you weren't like a daily vlogger, no, so no. in a way, it's like they don't have that piece of you that they need to know, but right. at the same time, it's like rather than just, yeah, it's like I just, I'm gonna let you all know. Right, it didn't have to be a kind right. of like, this is why, why my content's gonna change right. or something, it was just like... Did you wear a wedding ring? I did! Because I noticed when I took mine off occasionally, people, just if I had it off like I was cleaning or I left it off, people would be like, oh, is Buck divorced? I'm like, I don't, I'm not wearing my ring today. So yeah. people are very noticing things about well, that. You my know? thing was is like, my weight fluctuated a lot from when I got married to when I did source veg yeah. to all that. So like, I just didn't really wear it. I yeah. wore it around my neck like a necklace yeah. under my shirt all the time. Got it. But it didn't really look, there wasn't anything kind of like physically different about me not being married anymore. Right, right. Yeah. Just this look of, oh, disappointment and <laughs> failure. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> just see it on my face. I've got this very like I don't know if it's how do you I'm feel still... though since then? How, what when did you get divorced? I got divorced. Well, I got officially divorced like months ago, like yeah. two or three months ago. Yeah. So, but I, I'd been. And how through... are you processing it now? Is, are you I relieved mean, or sad or you know how do you feel? It's a little both, yeah. man. It's a little both yeah. because like she was my high school sweetheart, mm -hmm. and it was very much like we got to a point where, you know, it's one of those things where like you get to a point where you're like. 
I can work this out. We're gonna try to work this out. And there's only so many times where you can go like, we can tr try to work this out. Right. And then it just got to the point where it was like, it really got to a, there was no gray area. Right. It was like black or white. Either we do it or we don't. And it was really, it really came down to a kid thing, like having yeah. kids. Okay. I never and that's kids. a big thing in that. Well, that, that's the number one. That's know, it. From day one, you got it. Yeah. So if you're going to get married, please talk about that before you get married. Because uh, that's honestly, not going to change, too. Don't ever marry someone thinking, oh, I'll marry them. And then five years later, they're going to want kids. If they don't want kids, they don't want kids. But see, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I got married very young. Yeah. Well, I was 25. Still young. Right. I think if you get married before 30, you're very young. And to make a life choice about. I, I think, Wes, the older you get, you you, you learn more of the type yeah. of person you would want to be with. When you yeah. get married out of 19, 20, 25, 20, you're still very young and figuring your own life out. Well, and that's why, like, even if you talk about, like, you know, I want kids or I don't want kids in your 25 or whatever, mm -hmm. you don't know really. Like, you could right. say you don't want kids, but then that there's that pesky biological clock or genetics right. or the fear of, for, for women, it's the fear of not being able to have children and after people asking age. you, are you, when are you having kids? Ugh. When are you having kids? When are you having kids? Endless. The worst. Endless. I try not to ask people that because I know it's not a good, it's not. Uh, good it's for you, yeah. you're one of the good ones, not man. Not a good question. I never yeah. ask because yeah. I, I don't want to be asked, so I don't ask that. But it really just came down to a thing where like, people change, man. Yeah. People change, and I have this, such, such a gross, bitter feeling about change and marriage and how like it's just such this this gross cultural thing i know i'm gonna be like people are gonna be like wait no, a minute i kind of have feelings about that I and also once know. you once you're married too i will say I said i said to my husband will you ever get married again and he said yes and um and he said will you ever get married again and i said no and i said and i just sat there at the court watching people get divorced and fighting over fifty thousand dollars and fighting over not seeing the kids and i just thought you know once you involve the court of law i mean if i love somebody and want to have like a ceremony and like invite people for the poor but the point of having a legal marriage, I don't know. I said I don't believe in it. Like the tooth fairy or <laughs> bisexuality <laughs> liars. Um, it's a fairy tale. <laughs> it's a fairy tale. But um, I, yeah, I don't know if I, I don't need to get. I was married for like 13 years. I did it. I tried. I don't understand people who get married like four times. Like after like two, it's like maybe it's not for you. Right. So what I don't. I don't it? have a strong desire to get married again. Like if I meet someone and they we dated for like two or five or ten years and it was very important to them, I would consider it. But right now, it's certainly not in my mind. Like ooh, let's get married again. Like I don't know. Well, but then you get that you get into the whole kid thing again. Yeah, and well, I don't you, want children. No way, no. I'm too old for that. But that's shit. the thing. Like you don't know. Like pe again, people change yeah. all the time. And then you know, if divorce is an inevitability, inevitability, yeah. potentially in in the in the dark recesses of my soul right yeah. now, it's like. And then you involve kids. It's yeah. this mess, huge mess. When I was yeah. in the middle of getting divorced, yeah. and we were talking to a marriage counselor and stuff like that, it was very much like. They were like, we're very relieved you don't have children. Yeah. We're very relieved you don't have these like crazy assets or whatever. We yeah. had a house together, but that was it. And it was it was pretty clean other than that. And it was a very clean divorce too, which I yeah. am very appreciative of. Mine too. Um, but but so similar in the sense that I even asked her too, would you, do you think you'd get married again? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to get yeah, married and have kids. Yeah. I was like, that's insane to me. <laughs> it's insane to I me know. because... And I like the idea. It's very sweet of you to be like the compromise angle where you're like, if someone wants to get married, I'll consider it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a sweet thing. But. For me, it's like, if, 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 if. Right, right, And that's right. the biggest if you've ever seen. Yeah. It's going to be so careful. It's going to be so, it's going to be like prenup. It's going to be yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. Very clean. But man, it's just, I, I, the only way for me to avoid the whole kid thing, just snip, snip. Got to yeah. get rid of those little tubes down there. And will you do that? I think I'm doing it. Yeah. In fact, I would have done it already. Well, there's a doctor here to put. Would you come in now? Let's and do snip, it. Snip. Let's do a periscope. <laughs> Can you <laughs> imagine? Brandon <laughs> Deal. I want to get it. Snip. The first YouTuber oh, snip God. snap on, on periscope. Wow. But I would have done it by now. But that that new technique is coming. Where they just they all they do is they shove. See, it I know in nothing order. about this. Oh, I'm never going to impregnate let anybody. Me so tell you, I don't think. <laughs> you have a sperm donor, or yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Would you ever consider that? No, I'm good. No. I don't. I think that's a that's a whole we interesting need more topic. I don't know. Uh, oh my we god. This is plenty. So in terms of being divorced and d how did you cope? What, what did you find were your best strategies to handling your what were your strategies to help well, yourself through it? I mean, there's nothing better than time. I mean, that's the thing. Like it just takes It really time, was time. What did you do though to heal and feel better about it? I kind of just immersed myself in friendships yeah. and I immersed myself in family and I immersed myself in kind of my work. Yeah. And uh because man, it was tough. There mm -hmm. were some very 
very tough times yeah. and the hardest stuff I've ever had to deal with in my life. And even recently, like this is, you know, we've been separated for almost two years now. Yeah. We, that's, I mean, that's that. And uh, I still have these tinges of kind of like, man, that's so sad. It I've is spent sad. so much time with this woman yeah. and I have nothing but respect for her. And I hope, I absolutely hope yeah. that she is happy and has kids. That's what she wanted. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I, I it's, it's sad sometimes, but it was ultimately yeah. we were not meant to be together yeah. I truly believe that and that's the part that kind of like is like yeah I you take it comfort in that yes and that's the same with me it's like I take great comfort in that even though I, I the last maybe two of the three times I saw him I got in the car and I cried yeah. I felt sad I felt and I will tell you a year later I feel worse I do I feel worse like a year ago I felt differently about it and now a year later I feel way more disappointed and sad about it that you know it's like there's that it's just it's sad like I'm gonna it's be sad. honest with you, it's man. sad let me give you some honesty here I went to Epcot yesterday yeah. and I yeah. wanted to talk to you about this yeah. yesterday um but I went to Epcot yesterday and the last time I was there was uh Sarah and I went for like an anniversary it was yeah. a big trip and all of these memories just rushed right back to me yeah. and it was like awful yeah. I was like Oh my God! Well, and I, and I was there alone, which is kind of sad already. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, <laughs> I would have gone with you. I know. I, I hated hearing okay. that. I know. I, I should have just. Okay. But I didn't want to go down my text thing and be like, yeah. "You want to go? You yeah, want to yeah, go? Yeah, you want to yeah, go? You want to yeah. go?" Well, I should always be one. the first text. You're yeah, gonna be the first that. from now on. I swear to you. <laughs> yeah. But I was there, man, and it was so yeah. tough. Was I, and tough. even though it was actually an awful time, yeah, my anxiety was the worst it had ever been in my life. I had just gotten into like a, a pretty bad car wreck, and then I left my comfortable Sony job for source fed it yeah. was right when i started source fed and so i was just just this nervous mess yeah. and so and and then so we flew it was my first time flying a major flight and that was nerve-wracking and then sarah had this like stomach poisoning so she was puking <laughs> and i was like having this crazy anxiety and so it was a terrible time yeah. but like i was walking through the world showcase and i was like oh man yeah there was a time where i was a married guy yeah. and i was happy and i didn't foresee these changes in life and I don't know how to like project that to people to mm. be like be careful and like I don't know because also I, you know we knew each other since high school yeah. and it really was one of those things where it was like I settled right away I didn't think I'd be able to do any better ever yeah. and I was very like you know scared of what my life was going to become I would never meet a woman ever yeah. I was just very down on myself as a young man and I still am yeah. but you know I don't know what to say I don't know what the what the what the moral is yeah there's no right way to like be with somebody and there's no right way to decide if you want to marry that person Right, I love when people are like you just know. I'm like, oh please, yeah, you no, just know. You know. <laughs> it's like, it's, no, just, it's no, a no. lot of work to figure out if you want to be together. That's why people get married so quickly, and it's like, good luck. It's yeah. like, really, if you know someone and you have a great friendship and you're hanging out for like five years, and they're like, wow, I really love this person, because you could have great sex for like seven months and be all into each other, and of course you're so fun and romantic, and then suddenly you're it's like, really, you don't even know this person. It's like no. I mean, you're different because you are, but I'm just the most couples I see they get in so fast and they're in so deep so fast, and that's why now I like dating multiple people because it's like I need why would I start dating someone and go on like three or four dates and then be like oh it's just you it's like no I'm gonna date this person too and this person too and figure out what I like and enjoy life because I'm just you know so yeah. it's, it's like my whole attitude about dating and marriage is completely different now but the scary part is is you can even have a long 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 relationship and do it quote unquote the right way yeah. and you still don't fully know that person sure. five six seven eight years yeah. later you, you know you never know you never know it's so Throwing terrifying baloney on a wall and hope it sticks just, yeah. good luck <laughs> Or at least leaves a nice baloney against the wall and we got cut off. Um, hi guys, uh, I, I lost the end video of this. I had filmed like 10 or 11 at the same time and the end of this video got lost uh, along the way. And um, I wanted this to be the premiere episode of The Struggles is Reels. Welcome to my new series because I love Steve so much. And um, I think our stories are, are similar, but different and interesting. And I think you could see watching the video that, um, you know, we're both still disappointed. Like, it's like divorce is not a happy decision. It's not an easy decision. And you can see it's like we're both still a little like, oh. Um, I think we're both moving forward though in different ways and um, and everyone's different that's the thing it's like you do you know some people want to get married again or they want to find a boyfriend a girlfriend again or some people you know I'm happily single right now and um, I did say in the video that I didn't think I'd ever get married again and actually the last week that I've since I've filmed the video I thought I shouldn't put that out to the universe because I don't know if I'll get married again I have no idea I'm not I'm not against it but I I don't know but it's still I'm still so soon after my divorce that my 
it's just not on my mind. It's not like, you know, if I was like 25, I'd be like, oh, I'd love to find a husband, but I'm 40 and I'm divorced, so finding a husband is just not high on my list of priorities. Um, I take great pride in my marriage. I have not talked about it on camera at all, but I just, you know, I love my ex-husband and we're on good terms and we do the dog swap and we go back and forth and we, you know, he called the, uh, we talked the other day and he gave me compliments about my stand-up and I mean, I love him very much and just because our marriage is over and it didn't work as husband and husband doesn't mean there wasn't so much love there and um, I still love him, of course. And, um, but it is disappointing and that's what you can see in the video. Like, it's not like, yeah, I'm divorced. It's more like, oh, um, you know, and I, I, I do take great pride that I was married for 13 years and that I was his husband and that, that's my takeaway from all this. It's like, I can sit here and be all like, and I did a lot of that in the last year, like, oh, as you know, if you've watched the videos on this channel, very stuck and not w wishing to move forward. And now it's like, no, it's time to move forward. And I mean, when you get divorced, you can either be damaged or you can be educated. And I choose to be educated. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about myself in a relationship. I learned a lot about how I handle things and how, what, what I'd be looking for. Like now at 40 years old, like I know, like if it was time to settle down again, I know like this is the type of person that I would look for and all that stuff. So I do, I feel educated and, um, you know, I feel like this video is kind of, and even in my personal journaling on this channel like a month ago, it's like it's it's time to move on. It's time to just say, you know, I can't, you know, I, I, it's, I can't get stuck and like, oh, I'm divorced and oh, I failed and oh. It's like all you can do is just, you know, one day at a time and move forward. And so that's what me and Steve are both doing. And so, and also it's funny that Matt's in the corner. I'm not supposed to say that. They're going to kill me. They're going to just, so Steve's in the corner for Matt's video and Matt's in the corner for Steve's video. And we weren't going to say anything and that was going to amuse us. But because this is the premiere episode, I didn't want you to think, what's going on? Why is he in the corner? Is that going to be a theme throughout this series? <laughs> Just, just to amuse me and Steve and Matt, and I'm sorry, and they're gonna be like, why'd you say something, Buckley? We weren't gonna say anything, but that was, I didn't know when I filmed with them that this was gonna be the first episode, but because I, I just wanted this to be the first episode, because I love Steve, and I love our rapport and our relationship, and I thought this would be a good, you know, a good intro to the series where... You see, it's like I, I, I sit down with my friends and we just kind of talk about what they're going through and how they're getting through it. And, you know, that's all life is, you know, it's just all muddling through together. Um, so I really, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you look forward to more. And I will see you next week with me sitting down with another one of my YouTube friends. So thanks for watching the premiere episode of The Struggles is Reels. And thank you to Stevie NYC for making the intro graphic. Check out his links below. I really appreciate it, Stevie. And Steve, my Steve Zaragoza, I love you so much. So much in my heart, in my guts, in my vagina, in my everything. <laughs> Do I have a vagina?